Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our dear brothers and sisters, respected elders, Alhamdulillah, we want to uh, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing us together. We want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this day of Jumu'ah. And although we cannot be together, although we are not physically together, our hearts are together. Even though uh, there is no one here in the masjid except uh, for me and the, the brother who is filming this, and a few of our staff in the office. Uh, we are still united, we are still together, and we're going to get through this as one jama'ah, as one community, as one ummah, as one nation, one nation of faithful and one nation of believers. Brothers and sisters, I'm not giving a uh, Jumu'ah khutbah today, sadly. This is just a reminder this is just a reminder to myself and you. This does not take the place of your fard salah. And so I respectfully ask those of you who are watching and those who are listening after this message to offer salatul dhuhr if you are uh, if you are at home or whether you are at work. Offer salatul dhuhr, inshallah, subhanahu wa taala. Brothers and sisters, uh, we want to uh, say that first and foremost, even though we're in a time of tremendous uh, difficulty, there are lots of people. I, I know that there are many people that are sad. There are many people that are afraid. There are people that are upset, that are angry, that their plans uh, for graduation, that their plans for their weddings, their plans for Aqiba and so on and so forth, their plans for travel, maybe their plans for Hajj or their plans for Umrah may have been changed due to the spread of the corona, the new coronavirus, the novel coronavirus. My brothers and sisters, first and foremost, as faithful, as Mu'minin, as Muslimin, as Muhsinin, Bi by the Permission of Allah, the Lord of the Worlds, no la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alayhi wa alayhi That there is no change and there is no power except through Allah, except through the Creator, except through the Divine, the Most Exalted and the Almighty, which means all the changes that we're going through are because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed them. And Allah ta'ala is using this virus, which is nothing more than a, a program. It's no more than a, uh, a, 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 it's no more than a biological program that's upset all of our plans. La hawla, there is no change. It's often translated as no strength, but how how well are you how we know from its meanings is to change. There's no change in our lives. And our lives have been changed over the past two, three months, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's no power. There's no power except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no life and there is no death except through al muhdi al mumit except through the one who is ever living and the one who causes life, the one who allows death, the one who is self-subsisting. So know, brothers and sisters, that the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus, has no power. Jund min junudillah. It is just a warrior from the warriors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has sent it at this time for wisdoms, some of which we can, we can comprehend, and for other wisdoms. I would say infinite wisdoms that are beyond our comprehension. So I want you and I to recognize first and foremost that Allah is in control. And recognize along with that, that Allah is still Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. 
Allah's name, Al-Jabbar. Allah's name, Al-Jabbar, is the one whose will is executed and nothing can resist or stop his will from being executed. Allah's name, Al-Jabbar, also means the one who repairs things that are broken. And brothers and sisters, the will of Allah is being executed right now. All of the scientists, all of the billionaires, all of the politicians, all of the scholars, all of the saints, none of them could stop this from coming. None of them could stop this from coming. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this upon us as a means for us to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم الذي بعد ما عملوا لعلهم يرجعون. أو كما قال سبحانه وتعالى الله تعالى says corruption has appeared on the land and the sea because of what human hands have done because of what human hands have wrought. In order that they taste some of that which they have done, and in order that they return back to Allah Ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, on this day of Jumu'ah, let this be a day of return, as it was for our father and mother, Adam and Hawa, Adam and Eve, alayhi wa salatu wa Peace and blessings be upon them. Let this be a day of repentance. Let this be a day of tawbah. Let this be a day of returning back to Allah Ta'ala and repenting from our wrongs. Well, what wrongs? Scientists and global health experts, you can read articles in CNN and the New York Times and, and other reports from global health organizations that mention that the root cause of this pandemic and many other pandemics that we have seen over the past 30 years is the way that we human beings are exploiting this world. The injustice that we ourselves are benefiting from in our homes, in our businesses, in our misogyny, in our places of economic and political and social activity, brothers and sisters, that this virus is a result of the climate change that we have been experiencing with severe weather and the warming of the earth that makes it more conducive for such viruses to exist. That this outbreak, this pandemic is a result of the mistreatment and the injustice and the wrongs and the abuse of animals in markets, wildlife animals that according to the rules of Sharia, according to the rules of Islamic law, should not even be eaten in the first place. Wild animals that are being brought into the cities and kept in cages and kept in hot rooms where disease festers until it's passed from animals to human beings, and then from a few human beings all over the world. We need to repent from all of this. We need to ask Allah Ta'ala to make us true khulafa for the world, true vice-jarrets, true stewards, true representatives of Allah on the earth who establish justice and harmony between all of the creatures of Allah, between all of the nations of the family of humanity. Brothers and sisters, let this be a time of Tawbah. Let, let this be a time of asking Allah what kind of world we should be building, what kind of world we should be investing in for ourselves and for our children and our children's children to the seventh generation and beyond. Inshallah, let the time that many of you are spending at home now 
working from home, spending time at home with your children, spending time at home, homeschooling them and supervising their education. Let this be a time of strengthening the bonds with your family, of spending quality time with your wife, with your husband, with your children, with your parents, and those that share your home with you. Brothers and sisters, this day of Jumu'ah, let this be a day when you, that you still honor, even though you may not be offering Salat al Jumu'ah, the prayer of Jumu'ah, you should still make Ghusl if you can. Of course, if you're at work now and you won't be at home until after another, then you won't have an opportunity. But if this outbreak lasts as long as the government and the public health officials are predicting, we may be praying Dhuhr for a lot longer than we would like to, brothers and sisters. So on these days of Jumu'ah, you should still offer Salat al Jumu'ah. On these days of Jumu'ah, you should still recite Salat al Kahf. Still read Salat al Kahf, the 18th chapter of the Quran. Listen to it if you cannot recite it. Read it in English, or read it in Urdu, or read it in Chinese, or read it in Bangla, or read it in whatever language, in Spanish, whatever language you know, brothers and sisters. On this day, we should still increase our Salat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our Durud Sharif on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even though you are not in the Masjid for Jumu'ah, you should bring the light and bring the spirituality of Jumu'ah into your home, into your office, into your car. Don't let your connection with Allah depend on being in the mission. This is one of the lessons that we must learn. Do not let your connection with Allah be dependent, contingent on coming to the mission. The Prophet Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Allah made the entire earth a masjid for me and a place of purification. And so while we are praying to be back in the masjid as soon as possible, while we are crying, crying that Allah Ta'ala has decreed that we not be in the masjid, don't let your heart be disconnected from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the purpose of the masjid? Except to connect our hearts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, my advice, if you have not done so already, take one room in your home. It doesn't have to be the biggest room, just a room in your home. And make that your masjid. Make that your mission, not just now, but at all times, you should have one room in your home where you take out all the chairs, you take out all the tables, you take out all the unnecessary art and, and whatnot, and you make that a musalla for you and your family. You make that a mihrab for you and your family. You, even though you may not be able to come to the mission here on Old Church and Road, Bring the masjid to your home, brothers and sisters. Bring the masjid into your home. Bring light and rahmah and barakah. Bring light and, and grace and mercy and blessing into your home. Let it be that place in your home where there are no distractions from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let it be that place in your home where you go for salah, you go for dhikr, you go for the ritual prayer, you do your nafila, you do your voluntary prayers, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let it be that place in your home where you meditate and you reflect and you beg Allah ta'ala to lift this affliction from us. It is an adab, as the Prophet said, but it is also rahmah, it's also a mercy. I want to finish, brothers and sisters, saying that we should never lose hope. Our ummah, this ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam, has been through so much over the past 1400 plus years. And at this time, Allah Ta'ala has given us all the tools that we need to be close to Him. 
all the tools we need to seek healing. My brothers and sisters, my advice to myself and to you is to increase in this month of Rajab and just in a few days, on the 27th night of Rajab, we will be commemorating the Isra and Mi'raj of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi the miraculous night journey and ascension of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he went, as Allah says, Subhanahu the asra bi abdihi laylan bil masjid al-haram ila masjid al-aqsa al-ladhi barakna la'awla. Allah Ta'ala it says transcendent is the one who took his slave during just a part of the night from the sacred, most sacred mosque to the furthest mosque around which we have blessed to show him from our greatest signs. Indeed, Allah hears and sees. Allah hears and sees all things. Indeed, Allah hears and knows all things. Brothers and sisters, with your families, study the story of the miraculous night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem. And then from Jerusalem through the seven heavens, Allah Ta'ala took Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu into space. Into space. And then Allah took him beyond time and beyond space. And then he revealed to his servant when he revealed. Brothers and sisters, this event that happened according to the majority of our scholars in the 11th year of the Hijrah was preceded by what? The year of Sa'is. In the 10th year of the Hijrah, when our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he lost his beloved wife, our mother Khadija the Great. May Allah Ta'ala be pleased with her. When he lost his beloved uncle Abu Talib, who was his father after his father. And it's, it happened in this 10th year when he was rejected by his people in Mecca, rejected by his people in Ta'if who had the children and the thugs of the city throw stones at him, spit at him, insult him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he did not complain much to Allah Ta'ala. He did not lose hope at once in Allah Ta'ala. And he did not even take revenge on those who harmed him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is an example for us, brothers and sisters. Don't curse the coronavirus. Don't curse, don't be upset at Allah's decree. Be patient with Allah's decree and ask Allah to decree good and to replace this difficulty with ease. May Allah Ta'ala fill all of your hearts with ease. May Allah Ta'ala fill all of our hearts with ease. May Allah fill all of our hearts with patience. May Allah Ta'ala fill all of our hearts with hope. May Allah Ta'ala fill our hearts with certainty in his promise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sa says, well, and the and success of the those who have taqwa of Allah. Brothers and sisters, have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be reverent and obedient to Allah, especially in this time of difficulty, especially in this sacred month of Rajab. And as we go into Sha'ban and then Ramadan, Allahumma barikana fi Rajab al-Sha'ban wa barikana Ramadan. May Allah bless us in Rajab. Inshallah, and help us to reach the moment of Ramadan. May Allah Ta'ala forgive us. May Allah Ta'ala rectify this planet. May Allah repair this planet. May Allah Ta'ala make us among those who speak up for those animals and those plants that are being destroyed, that are being abused, who cannot speak for themselves. May Allah Ta'ala give healing to those that are sick. May Allah Ta'ala count those believers that have passed away from this virus among the shuhada, among the martyrs. May Allah Ta'ala protect our masajid in this time. And even if we cannot be in this masajid praying and reciting the Quran and doing dhikr, we ask that Allah Ta'ala send believers from the jinn and that Allah send angels to fill up these masajid so that the remembrance of Allah and the worship of Allah does not cease in these buildings within these walls, wherever they are in the world. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma ahsin aqibatina fi al-mulki kulliha wa jinnat al-khizr dunya wa adab al-akhirah. Rabbana atina bil-lahu rahmah.
Salaam alaikum. Jazakallah khairan.